few things that need to be done in this video. It is unfortunate, but it is the time of year where I do a lot of reversing, meaning I'm going to take advantage of the deep south, the bright perma shade space that it is this time of year because the angle of the sun now does not reach this no matter what time of day. So <laughs> yeah, it is kind of an orchid shuffle, but seeing as orchid shuffles never actually end, I call this orchid chores diary. <laughs> so this belongs to that series. I hope you stay around. We'll have a look at how things pan out afterwards. Yeah, I may not get it all done in one go, but there's only one way to get it done, and that is to start. If there is anything positive about reversing what I have set up at the moment, that would be that the blooming alley isn't such a tight squeeze anymore. Meanwhile, I prefer the tight squeeze because that means we are in spring and summer, <laughs> not in fall heading into winter. Anyway, it is so good to have you here on the other side of the intro. Thank you so, so much for being here. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed seeing what I was up to to get kind of the gist of things. I'm coming at the patio, the deep south of this area from this angle, just to give you another perspective. You can see all my Rapiculus Lelias. Well, let's just say 90% of them are now over there. We'll have a closer look, but I'm not doing a complete update on them just to give you an idea of the goodies that are now displayed over there. But here to the right, the extension of the deep south, <laughs> patio is getting smaller. I now have the summer bloomers to get the maximum light that they still can before they have to go inside. Temperatures will be dropping below 20 degrees Celsius very, very soon. No bueno for these guys, but so close to the terracotta, I think I can get away with it if it does drop below 20, as long as the days stay nice and warm. Epidendrum schweinfortianum back up against the hedge, treated it with alcohol. Speaking of alcohol treatment, of course, an orchid shuffle is always a good time to check some orchids. And that is what I did. And I did find some attempts of scale attacking one or two of my Rapiculus lelias. I dealt with those. And I'm extremely concerned about my Catlia cernua. I do not like the state of the pseudobulbs while she is growing new growth. These pseudobulbs should be nice and plump. So there are issues with the roots in the pot, which we will address in spring. And it is possible that this orchid is going to go back onto a mount from which I took her in order to provide for her properly. But I'm not liking one bit what I'm seeing on the pseudobulbs. And as there were some dead leaves in there, I just picked them out to make sure that <laughs> no rot issues occur because it is a very wet environment. And Cattleya cernua, much like Rapiculus lelias, don't like it that wet. My assessment by putting this one into the pot now, fast forward after a very humid summer, yeah, back on the mount she will go, but that will be probably spring or when she grows new growths. And then I just hope I can keep up with it. Anyway, those are the plans for the future. I may even change my mind between now and then and just keep her in a pot and only with lava rock and all that fun stuff. But you can see that the deep south, well, it still needs quite a bit of cleaning. 
but that was not what this was about today. I went a little bit bonkers in the blooming alley because I was just gonna move orchids, put things away where they belong, where for the next couple of weeks they can stay. I wasn't gonna do a whole hoopla in there and it turns out that I did. So let's take a little gander, a little mosey onto Rapiculus Lelia Station here. Now we've had several dry days back to back. The humidity has been back to normal, something I'm accustomed to. And there is not much humidity in the blooming alley where these Rapiculus Lelias were. So some of them, while still in active growth, I gave them a bit of water as I was moving them. But the majority I did not, and they are extremely dry. So I'm going to have to come out tomorrow morning and see if them being up against the hedge now will increase the humidity and maybe there's more of a dew point over here. They're not so close to the terracotta anymore. And if not, if the surface of the lava rock or the media is not damp in the morning, then I'm going to give them some water and I'm going to be monitoring that they do get enough water. I also picked out a lot of lava rock from the surface of the pots because I had salt buildup. Very strange, seeing as I do not fertilize these heavily, I have a lot of salt buildup and this process will continue in the coming weeks for sure, as I see where is it coming from or if the surface keeps getting salty. Even though I hate this location because of what it means for the coming months, I love the presentation so, so much. All lined up, my morning coffee will be me stood here, sipping away and looking. Like, you know, as if I don't see them every day, several times a day, but I just love it. We will do a comprehensive update on them once again, because, you know, me and these Lelias. <laughs> babble, babble, gush, gush. But there is movement. And also, I do need to change some setups because you can see I've taken lava rock away from this one right here. And uh, Ceramis is in the pots and I need to change that. Lots of fun little projects yet to come here on my channel. So if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing as we move into the last phase of this year, 2023. It'll be great to have you on board. I'm just off camera really checking to see if the bodies that I found earlier are actually coming off easily and thankfully they are. Right, let's go to the blooming alley just to see some blooms and also the final result in case you missed the image or in case I forgot to insert it into the video. <laughs> Look at this, so much space. Even that comment just now in case I forget to insert it into the video. I've just given myself a verbal reminder. Oh well, <laughs> but look, yeah, I, I was here on my hands and knees. I got fur babies that like to shed and ooh, it was a bit nasty plasty, but at least now it's accessible and it sounds hollow. It really sounds hollow. <laughs> I can actually move without fear of bumping anything over. And then of course the mounts are up there. And what else is up here is a Gorgeous Neostylus Lucneri, back in bloom, two spikes this time. So, twice a year she blooms for me, but it's the first time that she has bloomed twice a year with two spikes on that main fan. Golden Peacock up there is also looking lovely jubbly. I have found a third spike and the buds are starting to take shape. It's awesome. Anyway, down here, Still got the hibiki going. I don't want to make this video too long. This is not about blooms, but a little final look has never hurt anybody when it comes to orchids. So we've got hibiki here on the left. We've got Caticlia Atra Walker, first time bloomer here. Gorgeously fragrant. My blooming alley is full of very, very sweet vanilla. Then throw in some sugar on top of that. It's insane. Gorgeous little thing. And then, of course, I've got my Honolulu Bretonii right here. Honolulu. And then, of course, I've got this beautiful Wilhelmara Shelob Marie L. Thank you so much, Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents, for providing me with the new genus and the name. I appreciate that. I still haven't changed the label, but <laughs> at least I've memorized it by now. Prismarta Carpa has finished blooming, but she can stay there for now. She's a little bit cumbersome and too big, but eventually she may come inside. 
And then just a real quick spin around. There you can see the beautiful result of my labors today. And also Antonatum still in gorgeous bloom. But what we would have almost missed if I hadn't done the shuffle is an area higher than Toida's spike because <laughs> These blooms don't last long, and if you don't see that there's a spike forming, you're not going to be able to enjoy the blooms. So woohoo! At least there was that result as well. One last look at my amazing extended blooming alley now. <laughs> so much space. <laughs> I would appreciate if you would like the video. Make a damn creaky bones feel much better as well. I'm going to thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate your time. And I get to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.